Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, I was just thinking how the Bible, God's Word, is the oldest book in all of history. The oldest book in all of history, but it never grows old. That's amazing. It, it is the story. It is His story. His story. History. His story. The Bible tells us who our God is. What a great revelation. And this Bible calls us to worship. And I was uh, reading over this psalm that we're looking at right now, Psalm 33. And, and I know I've read this time after time after time, hundreds of times over the years. And yet it has never grown old. It just is a wonderful word to hear, to listen to, to take heed to, to let come into my heart. And uh, I know we've talked about it already for several days, but again, his story, God's great story of creation, God's great story of his love and grace and mercy and righteousness, God's great story of what he wants us to do to give us counsel, to guide us, to lead us. And that's what we're reading about here. Here we find in Psalm 33, a call to worship. And who does he call to worship? He calls the righteous in verse 1. Oh, you righteous, those who are upright in heart, those who are living right first in their heart, and then they can live right in their ways, in practice every day. And then he tells us how, how to worship the Lord. Rejoice, shout for joy. Man, I've been thinking of Psalm 137 where the people of the people of Israel were in captivity in Babylon and they said those there that held us in captivity required us a song they said to us sing us one of the songs of Zion and they replied how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land because they were in captivity it was a sad period it was a time of mourning and sorrow but the songs of Zion the songs of the Bible the songs of God God's people who are trusting him. Matter of fact, look all the way down in verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his inheritance. And when a nation is putting God first and honoring him and recognizing him, following his counsel as we see in this chapter, oh, that people are a blessed people. They're a happy people. They rejoice. They can sing happy songs. You know, I go to different countries all over the world, and some of the countries I go to, they have such a sad, sad, sad history, a sad history. that Their songs, just listen to them, they're sad songs. They're songs of mourning, songs of just sorrow, and you can hear it in the music, in the melody, everything about the song, the words, they're sad. But my friend, a people who know God and a people who walk with God and love God, their songs are happy. And the songs of Zion were happy songs. And I've heard them sing in Israel. And oh, goodness sakes, the choir, the people, the kids. And these are just Hebrew kids singing in the streets, rejoicing over the fact that they're a free nation now. And oh, it's beautiful music. And my friend, the songs of God's righteous people are beautiful music. And so we have this call to worship, and it tells us how we should worship with the music of ten strings, the harp, the melody, all that is involved. But then he goes on to tell us why we should worship, reminding us of who he is. And we see that in verse 4, the word of the Lord is right. All his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. You know, to know God's word is to get to know God. Now, God is the God of beautiful, beautiful character. So we worship and praise him for the beauty of his character. His works are righteous. They're done in truth. They're full of mercy. His goodness fills the earth. The character of God is so awesome. We worship Him because of not only who He is, but because of His character in the sense of what He has revealed to us through His Word that brings worship to our hearts. And I trust that today you will meditate on the goodness and the mercy and the righteousness and awesomeness of God and who He is and what He has done and what He's done for us even today. 
Well, God bless you. What a wonderful psalm. I didn't get half as far as I wanted to today, but I trust this will kick off your week to love the Lord and worship Him with all your heart. God bless. Have a wonderful day.